What's up guys? In the last video we got the front of the Supra torn down. Today the motor's coming out. Follow along and I'll show you the process. First thing I'm doing here is removing the exhaust. This is the header going up to the motor and this is the mid pipe. Uh, these bolts are in really really bad shape so I just went ahead and pounded on a bolt extractor. I'm expecting these to break. I don't really care because I'm not using this exhaust and this is honestly the easiest way to get it off. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on these bolts. If they don't immediately come out or break, it's getting cut off. So, yes, I know I'm using an impact here without impact extensions. Uh, please call the police on me. Yeah, so the, the bolt extractor just destroyed that bolt, which I was kind of worried about. So, I'm going to break out the sawzall and get this off of here. A little bit further back on the car is this O2 sensor. I never see myself using this since this car will be on a standalone and will have a wide band closer to the turbo. So I'm just gonna cut this off and I'll probably deal with the wiring later. Next thing we're gonna do here is pull it from its exhaust hanger. My preferred method for this is using some sort of channel locks. These are Nipex. You don't necessarily need Nipex to do this, but anything looks like a channel lock will work fine. There are specific tools you can buy for exhaust hangers. I need to put that on my wish list. But I also don't work on exhaust that often. what I think I can just manhandle this one out of there next thing I'm doing here is draining the transmission fluid because this is the slip yoke whenever you pull the drive shaft out it will drain fluid out back there so you want to definitely want to empty this or else you're gonna have a huge mess on your hands it's a 24 millimeter bolt down here which in my case, I don't know if you can tell, but this transmission has like undercoating on it or something. And they got that all over the bolt, so it should be real fun to take out of here. There is some metal on the plug, which is to be expected. It's, it's okay to have a little bit of shavings on there. Next up is the slave cylinder on the transmission. So there's a grounding strap that goes to it here. Let's go ahead and take that off. I switched to the Milwaukee M12 ratchet. It's kind of hard to use a manual ratchet after you buy one of these. I highly suggest it. The next thing is to actually undo the hard line on the slave cylinder. I believe it's a 10 millimeter bolt here. And then I'm just kind of bend this down. You don't want to put too much pressure on it, but you are going to have to bend it out of the way some to get to the bolts above it, which hold the actual cylinder on, and those are 12 millimeter. The 10 millimeter bolt that holds the hard line on can actually be screwed back into the bracket. And I just like to put all the hardware back that I can and I'll put this bracket back onto the transmission right after I pull the cylinder away. All right guys, I've moved around. We're looking at the front of the transmission here. This is a 14 millimeter bolt holding this clip on or this, this bracket. The clip that I removed earlier, I don't think it was necessary because this will come off with this, this bracket. Um, I already have felt this bolt. It's on there really, really tight. So we'll see if I can get it off here. Not working with a whole lot of room in this area. Next step is to disconnect the fuel line. Now there is a, a banjo fitting here you can take loose. I'm not 100% sure if I took this loose, if the 
gravity from the tank would push fuel out here. Um, I'm not reusing this fuel feed, so what I'm gonna do is just clamp it off and cut it. Um, now, if you're gonna be reusing this, you obviously should not do this, um, but I'm not too concerned about it. So, it's clamped off. Now, you, you do want a drain pan. You can't really see it in my shot, but I do have a drain pan underneath this ready to catch the fuel that is going to come out of here. I think that's pretty much it for everything down here. We'll go ahead and lower the car down and start disconnecting everything from up top. I will have to come back down here and undo the motor mount bolts. Um, maybe some of the ECU connectors. I'm not 100% sure if I can get to them all from up top, but we'll find out. Um, I'm gonna try to pull this with the drive shaft still in the car right now. I think there's enough room that whenever I lift up the engine and slide it forward, the drive shaft will come out. I could be completely wrong in that because I've never pulled an engine out of a Supra. So we're gonna find out together um, if that will work. If not, it's not a big deal to jump back underneath here and undo the drive shaft real quick. Car's back down on the ground. I'm going to unplug the harness from the ECU. ECU is underneath the passenger side dash. So you know there is a screw or two holding the kick panel on. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but there is a screw right where my finger is, so whenever you go to pull this side off, the entire uh, door sill needs to come out with it. It's pretty easy to get off, it just pops up. Okay, once that stuff's out of the way, underneath this panel here is the ECU. There are two 10 millimeter nuts along the bottom that hold it in, hold this uh, cover on there. As usual, I'm gonna put the uh, nuts back, back on here so I don't lose them. Somebody before me actually put a remote start system on this car, which this orange and green wire you see here, is part of that install. I will be removing that because I do not want that on my car. Okay, I went ahead and removed the two nuts that hold the ECU in. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on this plug that you need to loosen and then it simply plug unplugs. And then this here also has a, a tab that you kind of press down and it will pull out of the ECU. And then the, the ECU is free. Once the engine ECU is out of the way, there's a couple other plugs that will need removed over here. This big orange one, um, there's a gray one there, and this, this white plug here. I really struggled with this orange connector. To, to undo this, you need to press down on the orange tab and then push this white piece at the top away from the connector. Um, it's kind of similar to a modern ECU plug. Didn't expect to see it in here. Definitely fought me a little bit. All right, now that the ECU is all unplugged from inside the car, I'm gonna start to take the wiring harness and try to get it laid on top of the motor. Uh, this right here is your charcoal canister related to the EVAP system, so it's going to need to come out of the way. And in my case, it's probably going to be the last time it's ever in the car. Alright, charcoal canister is out of the way, so now I'm going to start on the boot. Harness is disconnected, just got it laying on top of the motor right now. Gonna run around and disconnect any vacuum lines that I see and any uh, ground straps. I'm sure I'm gonna miss something, uh, so when I go to pull it out, I'll probably be doing a frantic run around the car, disconnecting whatever I end up forgetting.
Okay, the AC compressor and the power steering pump should be free now. I'm gonna go ahead and undo the motor mount bolts, lower the car back down, probably crawl underneath and undo the transmission um, cross member, put a jack underneath it, and then I think we are ready to start yanking on this motor. I'm gonna try to take the hood off by myself. So I went ahead and set up the camera because this should be pretty interesting. Okay, I'm gonna start lifting. I have undone the transmission cross member and I'll go back there. I have a jack underneath it. I'll go back there and lower the jack once I get some weight on this. Um, I do know that the starter positive is still hooked up. There might be some other stuff we're gonna find out here. And the motor is out. Uh, first time I've ever pulled an engine by myself. It wasn't necessarily an enjoyable thing, but I got it done. So the, the next video, I'll be tearing even more stuff out of this engine bay to get it ready for paint. Um, I've actually decided I'm just gonna get everything out of here, strip the car down as much as I can myself and take it to a paint shop I've already talked with them, so they're they're expecting the car. I know it'll turn out better than me just trying to rattle can the engine bay. So look out for the next video. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.